Hey, how are you doing today? Hopefully you're doing good. Either way, today I'm going to be testing the Intel i5-2400 in Fortnite on a whole bunch of different settings. I am pairing it with 24GB of DDR3 RAM at 1600MHz as well as an SSD for the boot drive and an SSD for the game drive, and I'm also pairing it with a NVIDIA GTX 980Ti. And I am using the latest NVIDIA drivers. I am also limiting the GTX 980Ti to 80% of its power, the reason why is it has bad thermal issues. Starting off, I am testing Fortnite at 1080p on performance mode with the low settings in the performance mode, and by doing that, the game is running, I don't want to say great, and I don't want to say bad, it's running average. Well, no, this isn't really average, actually, yes it is average, Fortnite has a nickname called Stutter Knight, and yeah, it is stuttering a lot. That kind of goes by the nickname Z-Worms Gaming gave it, Stutter Knight. It was getting 109 frames per second on average with a 1% low of 3. Sometimes it would actually freeze for over a second, but the average at least came out to a 1% low of 3, so that's not horrible. But that's that's definitely not good. Next I tried performance mode with the high settings and the frame rate was about the same. It was getting about 109 to 110 frames per second on average and the 1% low was 3. So again it's very stuttery and stutter night just doesn't perform. I didn't even think about it. I just said stutter night. Fortnite just doesn't perform that good. <laughs> the average frame rate is amazing but it just, it's not smooth at all. Next I tried DirectX 11 mode on the low settings, and it wasn't running that good. So what was going on was the game was getting 71 frames per second on average, and again, the 1% lows. This time there were not three, that would be luxury. Not even two, there are one. Yeah, one frame per second. That's not very good. <laughs> And yes, I do have the graphics card limited to 80% of its potential power output, and I have it overclocked by 150MHz to hopefully overcome that limit in the power I gave it. The reason why is my cooler is kind of DIY, it's not really good at all, and it will very happily overheat if I just leave the power limit set at 100%. Also, I was GPU bound at native 3D resolution, so I ended up turning it on to performance for the 3D resolution, which limits it to 50% to make it CPU bound, not GPU bound. Then I tried DirectX 11 on the medium settings, again with 50% resolution scale. It was not happy, it was stuttering really, really badly. It actually froze on me for about 10 seconds at one point, which is why the average frame rate only came out to around 25. Granted, I only tested it for about a minute at the medium settings. So you know what that means, right? Let's go to the high settings, because why not? <laughs> on the high settings, I played longer than I did on the medium settings. On the medium settings and high settings, the average frame rate probably would be similar, because on the high settings, I actually got a higher average frame rate. The average frame rate was 42 instead of 24 or something I got on the medium settings, but again, I played longer on the high settings, so it was able to even itself out some more. But even though we got 42 frames per second, the 1% low was still 1. Yes, just, just a single frame per second. 1. Th that's just not good enough for an FPS game. Next I tried 1080p with DirectX 12 on the low settings and I was again using the 50% resolution scale or 50% 3D render or whatever it's called to eliminate the possibility of having a graphics card bottleneck. Either way, yeah, DirectX 12 didn't really improve anything. I was getting 50 frames per second on average, that's fine, but the 1% low was 2 frames per second, that is not good, and the frame time graph looked like a centipede's legs. It should be flat, not a thousand different legs or however many legs a centipede has. Yeah, that's just, that's not great. It doesn't feel great either. It's just not great in general. I also tried DirectX 12 on the medium settings, again with 50% 3D resolution, and that didn't improve anything. Well, actually, it shouldn't improve anything. Higher settings usually equals worse frame rate, and that's exactly what happened here. 
so the average frame rate was actually somehow higher. I think this is down to a coincidence. The average frame rate was 56, but the 1% lows, yeah, um, they don't exist. They're zero. Zero frames in a second. That is not good. Well, I mean, that's the trend of this video. It's not good, but that's especially not good. One is like a hot rod. It's 100% better than zero. <laughs> yeah, okay, let's let's try high settings. That's got to help something, right? So both times I said it's got to help something, right? I was joking. It wouldn't, well, it shouldn't help something, but I really don't know what to say about this. Both times I was wrong, it literally helped being on the high settings. I really do not understand how. On the high settings, I was getting 54 frames per second on average, with, which is a improvement, and the 1% lows were not zero. They weren't one. They weren't two. They weren't three. They were four. So that is, what is it, a 400% improvement? Or a infinity improvement? Oh, well, I think anything is a infinite improvement over zero, so... Yeah, play on the high settings, I guess. You get better visuals on the high settings, and you get slightly smoother frame rates, although slightly smoother is a stretch, it still sucks, but hey, it's a little bit better. I also tried DirectX 12 on the Epic settings, again with 50% resolution scale, and the game was, well, it was not running as good as the high settings, it was running worse, which is to be expected, but at this point in the video, is it expected? Not really. I don't even know what's going on at this point, but either way, <laughs> it was getting 49 frames per second on average, with a 1% low of 1. That's pretty neat. But, okay, 1 frame per second, 1% low, that is still awful. You really went more than 1 frame per second for the 1% low, but then again, I guess that's just what Stutter Night is. It stutters a lot. So, is Fortnite playable on the i5-2400 slash i5-2400? The answer is yes. Just stick to the performance mode, stick to the low or high settings on the performance mode, and it will be a decent experience if you don't mind stutters. But Fortnite stutters anyway, so I guess if you're trying to play the game, you should be used to stutters at this point. <laughs> Either way, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like because that helps out the video a lot. As well as if you could subscribe, that would also help out quite a bit. And let me know, do you know anyone who still uses the i5-2400 in 2024? Personally, I don't. But it still is a somewhat decent CPU. Either way, thanks for watching and have a great day.